When last we left off with this particular terrain piece, uh, what we had was it was all built up and ready to go. Now, one of the things that I've done is I've cleaned it up just a little bit more because we're going to add some details to this today. Hey, my name is Aaron, and welcome to Homebrew Terrain. I threw this little pillar in the middle here to kind of hold or brace this piece up because eventually, this is just being cardboard, it will sag. So uh, I took a three popsicle sticks, as you can see, and I glued them together. And uh, I went ahead and glued them inside. They're just using regular Elmer's glue, nothing too exciting at all. And that'll, that'll stick that there and it'll make it nice and easy to play, you know, greater demons or whatever you want to do. Now, one of the things that uh, I've been doing lately, of course, is the Warcry. And Warcry's been a lot of fun, but as you can see, this is the bell tower right here. I haven't got it painted yet. Um, and it's the only piece in the entire set that has a, a platform that is over three inches. Uh, which means, of course, that, that if you get pulled off of a piece of terrain or whatever, it, you fall or something, it's, it's not really going to cause any damage. And it doesn't really give any of the characters the ability to, like, diving leap on people. Or even when you fall off, it's not really going to hurt. So, what I suggest is that we start making terrain ourselves that uh, is going to be much higher. <laughs> And, and so what I'm going to do today along with this piece here is we're going to go ahead and we're going to build some terrain that is quite deadly, uh, in fact, so like 12 inches high, that sort of thing. And this way you can take like objective markers and put it up way high and then it forces the characters to have to go up to the top of these towers. Otherwise, quite honestly, in any war game, if you have a piece of terrain that's over three inches tall, no one will use it. Everyone just, it's cool looking on the table, but it's just dysfunctional. What you have to do is you have to force people to use it. That becomes the game. So you get a couple of towers that are all broken out or whatever. So I'm going to show you how to make some really cool platforms and towers that look really neat. Uh, and we'll be able to put them on the battlefield. And then again, throwing an objective onto that piece will force people to have to go up to the tower and take the objective or something like that. Also, we're going to talk about things like ladders, which are really easy to make, and uh, steps, which are really important to make properly, uh, because if you make them the wrong way, then your, your little pieces can't fit in there and they, they don't work. So, so here we have the outside of the building that we created, um, and then of course the inside. I showed you the support beam that I have on the inside here, and this is what it looks like right now. So the first thing we're going to do is I took two popsicle sticks, and I broke off the ends, so you can see right here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to just glue them along the front side here like a support structure, so you can see it like this, and then I'll put another one on the other side, and it'll look like there's a support beam going along there. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to come to the inside of the building here and look at the line that's created right here uh, as second story, and then I'm going to put another support beam just underneath it here and run it along that way, and that'll start to flush out some of the detail on the outside. So let's go ahead and do that really quickly here. All right. And notice that I am using the old Elmer's glue to do this. You don't really need to use um, hot glue or anything like that. This isn't like structural. It's not um, really important to get it done super fast. And in fact, I find it works better, especially with the cardboard, uh, to use the, the popsicle sticks with Elmer's. So you just run a bead of glue on the inside there and you just smack it onto the side of the building here. And then what I do, of course, is just run my finger along the inside here and kind of wipe up some of that extra glue. And it doesn't matter if it gets a little messy, that's totally fine. Just like that. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take another popsicle stick and just measure from, you know, there to there. So it's, uh, let's see, right there. And I'm just going to break that off using my clipper tools here. And again, this doesn't have to be perfect. The building's old and derelict and, you know, ripped apart and broken down. It's not like this is, you know, going to be something somebody cares much about. Okay, so then I go right to here and uh, let's see. Uh, like that. And then I'll just trim off the top right here to make it match. So it'll look something like this. And then again, same thing. So there we have it. Um, I glued the first piece up there on the top and now I'm working on the second half over here doing the same thing, just the same. 
There is going to be a little bit of a gap between the popsicle sticks right here on the edge because the cardboard kind of actually doesn't fold at a 90 degree perfectly. It, it kind of rolls around and so there's like a little ball there. That's okay though because we're going to use that to our advantage later on when we add a balcony to this thing. And the Elmer's glue actually works pretty good on this as well because cardboard is, as I have said many times before, very, very thirsty. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to look right here on the inside. And the easiest way to do this is just to take out your ruler and to measure the distance from the ground to the middle layer, which is two inches. So we're going to come over to here to the back side of this bad monster. And then we're going to draw a line across there with a pen so we know where to put our popsicle stick and put it there. Yay! And again, this doesn't have to be absolutely perfect, but it, it helps closer than not. That line there that I've just created with my pen is where the uh, popsicle sticks are going to go. So what we'll do here is we'll take a couple of popsicle sticks like this, and then what I like to do is just bust the ends off, take the thing in here, and just bust them off as, you know, as close to being even as you can get without really carrying too much because why would you? Um, and again, if you want to start scoring these up with the X-Acto knife, you want to get a really nice, like, weathered look to them, you can actually go through and just start using the X-Acto knife here and just kind of chunking them up like this. And it looks pretty cool. You know, you can like, even cut little, little end pieces out, just little nicks and cuts out of this thing like it's been, you know, over the years. It's just been hashed and worn out. And that's fine, you can do that, and, and that's great. Um, I'm not gonna really go into too much of that kind of detail because I don't really care and I'm lazy. Um, again, this is just gonna be a quick terrain piece, something that I'm gonna use for fun. Um, I don't know, because these don't match the uh, terrain cards. If you see the terrain cards, obviously you're not gonna have any. Now, if you want to, you can actually do your own terrain cards. Uh, just take like a, the terrain cards that they have in the thing and just throw it into like Photoshop or something and then, you know, make the terrain that you made for yourself and put them onto the terrain cards. And then you can just shuffle that all in, but then, you know, then it's all that printing and all that good goings on, so. Now, another problem you're going to run into is that this isn't flat. It kind of curves a little bit. Um, and so when you put the, you put it on there, you're going to see that the, the, the popsicle sticks kind of pop out. An easy way to fix that problem literally is just to bend the stick until it starts to break just a little bit and then put it back on. So now you'll see that the popsicle stick is con convexed there uh, and then you just push it on to the model and it usually stays pretty well. Like that. Ta -da! And then the next one's going to be the same. We're just going to take this popsicle stick and put it on the same right there but we're going to go ahead and uh, pop that end piece off because it's round and it doesn't work right. So like that. I'm not going to worry about popping this end piece off because it's actually going to stick out, I think, and I'm going to have to bust it off. Which is... Yeah, see, it's a truth. There you go, right there. Now, here's what I'm going to do, though. So, because these two pieces come together here, and this end of the building right here is all jaggedy and broken down, I'm literally going to shatter this piece up right here and make it look like it got busted off. So, we know we want it to be at least that far in. So we're going to come in here like this, and then just take that piece off. But then as it goes down, we're going to have a, a little bit of a, a fun time here. Just kind of cracking and smacking this thing. Like this. So, yeah, if I can get my hand out of the way here. Alright. I'm splintering up the wood pieces here and kind of just peeling them out. I don't want it to be too clean, you know? You want it to look like it's been kind of smashed and trashed a little bit. But I don't want to split the wood too much, you know? Alright. There we go. So something like this right here would be would be perfect. You can see it. See how that, that looks right there? That's going to give it more of a really coolness to it. Now, of course, because it's all uh, splintered up like that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the X-Acto knife here and really just kind of work the wood, like, right around in here. And, and make it look like it's been uh, kind of really beat up and weathered. That'll give it kind of a cool effect when I throw the paint and stuff on it. You'll see it, you know, really doing some neat stuff. So then what we do 
as we come onto here and we throw some glue onto this bad monster. You can use wood glue on this if you want to. I know some people that have done that with some measure of success. But wood glue takes a long time to dry and it's just kind of really hard to work with. And I just, I don't particularly like it as much as I do the, um, the Elmer's. It just works better with the Elmer's. You know, in this particular case, I've got a little piece of splinter right here, which is causing me some problems. So I'm gonna get rid of it. And there we go. And there you have it. Ta-da! And that's what it's going to look like. That's just the first step here. And this would be really cool because when we go to throw balconies and things like that on here, we've got some places we can kind of wedge stuff up against and make things. Okay. Now we're going to do the same thing on the other side. And here you can see I've done the same thing on the other side. So this is what it looks like now. All right. So now what we're going to do, this one's going to be a little bit more difficult. We're gonna take the door cutouts. Remember how I told you last time to save these guys because we're gonna use them as templates? I'm gonna show you how to make a door frame using the door. We're gonna take this flat piece of cardboard here and we're gonna make ourselves a little bit of a door frame. And again, the door frames don't have to be perfect. Again, this building has been blown up and burnt down and magic's cast inside of it and floor tiles are falling out and it's a big mess. So the, the frames aren't obviously gonna be perfect and neither is anything else. And in fact, you'll find that if you're building something like this and you actually do make them perfect, it, it looks out of place. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the, this is the cutout piece from the door frame of just one of them that we had. Um, so if you come to here and you, you put the, the door piece back in, you'll see that that's, that's the frame of the door that we cut out. It's probably, it's, I don't know which one it is exactly, but it's, you know, it's close enough to all of them that this will work. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this bad boy here, throw it down, and take the pen, um, and I'm gonna draw or trace the, uh, the shape of the door here. It's just this easy, okay? And then, um, so what you do is you take the ruler here and you make the frame. Um, it's a little thick. There we go, like that. And that. And then we'll just draw the outside like this. Now that we have the door frame drawn, so what we're gonna do here is we're just gonna cut out this arch. And I'm gonna use my X-Acto blade to do that and make sure you have a mat to cut on because otherwise you'll jack up your table and that won't do nice things for anybody that wants to uh, use the nice table later. <laughs> So it's going to look like this, like a little archway, okay? I'm going to take this little archway and we're going to glue it to the outside of this door frame. Now one of the things you're going to notice is that um, it's going to stick on top of the whatever piece this is right here. We're going to cut that off. We'll cut this off right here so that it will match that better. Um, if in a perfect world we would have made this a little bit higher up and we would have put more space in there and given more thought to it. But again, this is just something I want to do pretty quickly and, and make it look pretty you know, eh, all right. And that's exactly what it's gonna look like. So, there we go. Uh, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna go ahead and use this as a template to do the next ones. So I will go ahead and do one here. So then you'll have, a, you know, more of the same kind of templates, it's fine. They don't, again, don't have to be absolutely perfect and it's not a big deal if they're all messed up a little bit. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. It's, you know, it's probably fine. It's, you know, mostly, mostly fine. It'll just be, you know, it's okay. It's not, um, yeah, it'll work. So what we do here is we come in, throw some more glue on here and because, again, you could use hot glue on this, but why you just be wasting hot glue. This is fine. Mm -hmm. 
And I'm going to come through with my X-Acto blade here and just kind of carve up the bits that aren't working. See, that's, that's just not going to fly there. So what we're going to do is we're going to come here and just carve it off. See, I just trim the top off. Who cares? It's not a big thing. We'll come to here real quick. Put some more glue down. You don't even have to do this. This is just because something I wanted to do. And I like, I think it looks cooler. It's just me. Um, again, you could have stopped this a long time ago and just, you know, use, you could actually paint what I'm doing on here. You can just paint it on. And the texture's fine. It looks pretty good. There. Yeah, and then you can kind of see it like there. And it just makes the door pop out a little bit better. Like the door frame was supposed to be there or something. Um, it's not by accident. And you can do a bunch of those along here. Uh, and then the window frames are a lot the same way. Um, yeah, you can do that. What I'm going to do with the window frame though, is I'm going to use the popsicle sticks again. I'm going to try to bust one out here and see if I can't make that work. And then I'll have the window frame like that. That looks pretty good. There. That looks pretty good for a little windowsill. And then uh, I'm going to seal it up on the other side as well. And then, uh, you know, you can run a frame around it on the outside if you want to do that too. These floors right here aren't, you know, they weren't just slabs of cardboard. They were tiled and textured. They probably had, you know, wood flooring or tile flooring at one time. I don't know. I'm going to use tiles just because it's cool. It's cool, man. And so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to cut these little square tiles and then uh, glue a few of them in here and kind of have them all broken up. And that way you can paint them like a marbly kind of thing and have them be all broken and sad. <laughs> and you don't want to do too many of these things, it'll drive you crazy. I mean, you can literally, you know, tile the entire floor if you want to, but it will drive you So what we do now is that we have one of these, this will go back and we'll do another one. We'll just cut out like, I don't know, eight or seven of these. And again, perfection is not at all what we're going for here. I'm going to keep saying that over and over and over again until you get it. Because I know that the people who like to do this sort of stuff usually have a tendency to be perfectionists. And they absolutely, they want to make this, you know, look as perfect as they possibly can. And, and that actually ends up ruining it in this particular case. Um, I know exactly how it feels. I'm one of those kinds of people. I, I have to be perfect, you know, with everything and make it look exactly the way I want it to and it has to fit exactly the way it's supposed to and blah, blah, blah. But the, the honest to God truth is, the like, you know, when you're doing orc terrain and orc stuff, you know, the more jacked up it is, the cooler it is, you know, the more authentic it really looks because orcs wouldn't build something nice. And Chaos Dudes or something that has survived into the eight peaks or eight points, you know, that's not going to survive very well and it's not going to look very clean. So, you know, you're definitely going to want to have this be as jacked up as you can get it. So now I got seven of these little tiles and I'm just going to glue them kind of randomly around. Kind of creates the idea that this floor was probably really beautiful at one point. So you know, you notice that I took this piece of tile and I stuck it out over the edge of this thing. What I'm going to do when this is fully dry, I'm going to come back here with my X-Acto knife and literally shave that tile up to match the, the broken floor. So now I have the uh, random tiley bits that we laid down here and that'll actually look pretty cool. Now the only problem you're going to have when you're dealing with this is when you take a model, for instance, and you try to put them on here, they are going to kind of have a little bit of that wobbly model syndrome. 
uh, which can be a little bit frustrating. So uh, if you find that you're having too much of that, you can take the you know more cardboard and lay it down, or you know put jaggedy bits of something in there on the floor and just kind of fill up the spaces of the gaps where they're falling down a little bit. But the second floor here is really honest to God. It's just for decoration um, because your guys are going to come into here and hide. When they're, when they're playing the game, your dudes are going to come into here, they're going to hide around, they're going to move through these doors pretty quickly or take shots. But when they go up, if they decide to go up, they're going to go all the way. They're going to go to this floor here, and if there's balconies here that go even higher, they'll be doing that. They're not going to stay too much time on this second floor. Usually the second floor in any building is just decoration. Yeah, you can kind of decorate this part however much you want to, and then this piece right here, you need to leave pretty pretty well so they can get troops and things in here. The other problem with the top layer right here is the top floor right here is really going to be very small. As you can see, this is just the little the little pleb guy from uh, Iron Golems. And, and if he goes up here, really, I can only fit two more models up here. And if it's a bigger model, you know, like uh, like if I have this guy here, the, the, the Iron Golem Ogre dude, um, you know, he can't, he's going to take up the rest of that space. That's, I mean, he's, you know, once he gets to, like, right here, he's, he's falling. It's, so there's no you don't want to put too much in the way of stuff up on here. Uh, but down here, you're not going to see these guys down here very often. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to add the window, you know, the little, little pits that frame the glass. So what I've done is I've taken toothpicks here, and I've taken one toothpick in particular, and I've cut it, uh, I've very carefully used my X-Acto knife to notch it out. And I'm going to put these together like this, and I'm going to stick that in the window. Now I'm going to use the, see how it's corrugated like this? I'm going to use the corrugation to stick the uh, toothpicks into like I did before with these guys up here. So what I'm doing, so what I did was I basically just shoved it all the way in this way so that I could stick the one end in here and slide it back. Now what I'm doing is I'm sliding it back to the middle. Like this. See, so now the notch is on the inside and it's right in the middle. So then I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side so it'll look something like this. There you go. All right. And bingo. We've got a uh, window thingy. Um, just to solidify things, even though I don't really have to, I'm gonna go ahead and take some glue here and I'm gonna just drip it down onto the pole and let that run right into the little holes down in there and that'll uh, Keep it nice and happy. And then I'm going to use my finger, of course, to uh, keep it from looking so sloppy. Like, just like by running it around in there like that. Cleaning it up on the outside. Uh, that way it's all nice and cleaned up. So, if you want to get crazy on the cheese whiz from here, you can actually uh, cut out pieces of uh, uh, saran wrap and, and put it in here and then it looks like glass, but that's just, that's just doing too much. <laughs> At that point, you're, you're just doing way too much. Uh, and besides, you want to make sure that if you're going to do that, that you do that after you prime the model. So you prime the entire thing, whatever color you're gonna prime it, and then you put the plastic in. Don't do that before the primer, otherwise it'll look like you primed the windows and that's not gonna be good. Okay, um, so from here, from here, what we're gonna do is we're gonna mess around by adding a balcony to this thing. Now, I was doing some measurements on this and what I really want is to start this balcony at six inches because this is where we started getting into the danger zone for the models if they fall off in Warcry. Um, and then I really want to double it up to, uh, to nine inches. I really want a platform that's going to be this high. It's ridiculous, but that's what I want because I want to be able to have a series of terrain pieces that connect in the air, like the high air. Like, so if they were to fall off something that was nine inches or more, we're talking about death at this point. They would fall and it would be splat time. Uh, unless, of course, you're the Corvus Cabal, in which case nine inches would be insta-killing your enemies as you drop down on them uh, because they have cool abilities where they can do that, which is really frustrating because there's no terrain in, in Warcry yet that allows them to do that. So I'd like to have something like, you know, scaffolding or something that comes off of these in a series of buildings 
that are really high up in the air that will allow them to uh, be able to do what they do uh, and, and make it happy. So the thing is, is that if you've got the bell tower here, this is six inches. So we're gonna run the balcony here up to six inches and then have like a little scaffolding or stairway that goes out to it. So that's what I wanna do. So here, from here, I'd like to be able to run the scaffolding across the bell tower like this, you know, and have something like this. It would be cool. So we're gonna start with toilet paper rolls, but they're not gonna look like toilet paper rolls when we're done. So we know that this bad boy, I believe, is three inches. Most toilet paper rolls are Okay, so they're, they're close to three and a half to four inches tall, but I want them to be up here to six and then to nine. So putting it to right here, this puts us at about eight. Um, and then, so I want another, so I want it to be this tall here. Okay, so what we're gonna do, this is what we're gonna do. We're gonna make a cut like this. Okay. Then we're going to do is we're going to measure it out by fours. And it doesn't matter if it stays rolled like this because we're going to end up folding it here in a minute. Okay, um, we're going to go. So what we're doing right now is we're making. So what we're doing right now is we're we're making a brace for the the these things because you're going to need more than one of these to be a support beam up to nine inches. In fact, you're gonna need almost four, I think. Uh, let's see, there's six. Have I got this upside down? No, okay, we're good. Uh, so that's seven, eight, and so two of them, two of them are almost nine. So if you, if you look right here, so if you look right here, you've got two toothpicks and they come up to almost nine, because nine's right here. So you're gonna need uh, a little bit more than that because you're probably gonna need three of these guys because we're gonna break the tops off and the bottoms off. So you're gonna lose probably a quarter inch on each one of these toothpicks. And then we're gonna want that to be up to nine inches. So what we're gonna do here is we need to build a frame for the inside of them. So we're gonna glue these bad boys on here. And when you're done, you're not gonna see that there's a frame holding them all together. It'll just give it for extra stability. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna start here by measuring out the distance of a toothpick. So we put the toothpick on the end here, like it is. All right, and we get the pen. Where's my pen? Because I always have a pen just sitting there. Okay, there we go. Okay, so we're gonna measure out the distance of a toothpick. So we're gonna go to here, and we're just gonna draw a line. Like this. Okay, then we want this to have four toothpicks in width. So we're gonna go to here. Ah! Look how good I'm doing here. Like that. And then we're gonna come to here. Like this. And then to here like this. Do -do -do -do. Okay, and then the last thing we're going to do here is we're going to angle a little line right here and a little line right here. And we can even use a toothpick for this if we want as a ruler. And we're just going to go like this. This is the tab we're going to use to glue this thing together. So when you're done, it should look something like this. So now what we're going to do is we're going to take scissors. Like so. Like so. Okay, so now we've got this really, really cool template. Okay, and we're gonna take another piece of toilet paper roll and we're going to do the same thing. Where we're going to. Only now we can take the pen that I just had like two and a half seconds ago and I can't find now because I'm awesome at putting things down and forgetting that I've done it. Oh, there it is, it rolled up under here. <sighs> See how well I do here? Okay. So then, uh, camera where you can see it. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the piece that I had there and I'm going to draw 
a line like this. There we go there. And then of course we have the one right here. I'm trying to get my big fat hand out of the way. Again, I think you will find that doing this is a lot easier than I'm having because um, you're not having to worry about doing it upside down and backwards. I'm talking about it. Okay, so then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna mark right here and right here and right here on all the lines, and that's important, super important, because then I know where to make the fold. Okay. And then on the last one here, I can just take the toothpick and come down to the same thing. And by interesting, I mean not really all that interesting. Okay. That's a little weird. Two of them. Two of them is super important because one of them isn't tall enough. And in fact, I don't even think that two of them are tall enough, but I don't think we're going to need to make three. We'll find out in just a second. So now what we're going to do is we're going to take these, we're on the black lines right here that we, we drew. So you guys see all the black lines, they're, they're, they're all black and lining. Okay. So then what we're going to do here is we're going to fold this onto those lines like this. And uh, we're just going to keep doing that. Like this. And then like this. Now, we're going to fold this into quarters or fourths, and then the little piece right here on the end is going to tuck in here and glue like that. So it's going to be a pillar. See that? Like a little piece that we're going to have. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to put some glue here. See how well that works? That glue. And remember, don't, don't be sparing with this stuff because cardboard is very thirsty. And then we glue it under here like this. So it should be like this square looking tube. It doesn't hurt to have a pair of tweezers, by the way, to go in here and just kind of pinch this together. Like so. Any good paper crafter will tell you, tweezers are awesome and they will be your best friend. Also, you can use hairpins uh, if you want this to dry a certain way, if you really care about that much of it. Um, you can actually use hairpins to slide onto there and then let it let it dry like that. I personally don't really care all that much. It's not going to take me that long to do what I'm doing here. And these guys right here are really just a, a, a bracing fortification for the, the two popsicle sticks. There we go. It's just a bracing fortification for the popsicle sticks that are going to go down there. All right, so it's going to be like this, and then I'm going to have another one. It's going to sit right on top of it like this. And I'll make a little cuff to slide in between them. Okay, so here's the tubes right here that I created. They both uh, have little squares on them, and I'm just going to mount them together like this. And all I'm going to do is make a little cuff for them. So the way you do that is very simple. Uh, you take the same the same measurements right here, and then you just make the cuff just slightly smaller.
and I did my job pretty well. So it fits down inside there just like that. And then uh, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to stick these guys together like this. If I do it this way. And again, it doesn't. It can be. It can be loose and, and wobbly. It doesn't matter uh, because what we're going to do here is we're going to use this to extend it up to nine inches and cuff these guys together and then fill it with glue and it's not going anywhere. So the next thing we're going to do here is we're going to measure up to the nine inches that we want it to be by throwing our ruler on the floor, which is extremely important. It's uh, you have to please appease the floor gods. Okay. So what we do now, to be even more obnoxious is we roll some glue. And just let this sit and do whatever it's gonna do for a few minutes. Uh, whilst we prep the popsicle sticks. Okay, uh, the first thing we have to do here is we'll take these guys, and remember, you don't want the roundy tip here, so you're just gonna snap that off. Then again, it doesn't have to look perfect, but you do, don't, you know, you see how this is all kind of jaggedy at the top? I don't want that. I want it to be as smooth as I can possibly get it. Because we are going to buttress these guys up against each other. I said buttress. <laughs> like I said, it's probably going to take, it's going to take three popsicle sticks to get where I want. So it's going to get two solid popsicle sticks and then just a part of another one. And the kick is that we're going to do this three, four, four, five, four times. Four times is what we're going to do for here. And then we're going to make bracers in the middle and do all kinds of other fun stuff. But for the most part, this is going to be a structure piece. So we're going to have these buttressed up against one another like this. And we're going to glue it onto there. And it's going to look like it's all wood and stuff, but really it's the cardboard. Um, so, yeah. Then I'm going to take the next popsicle stick and do the same thing. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to let this dry uh, as this will hold the entire structure piece together. And then I'll be able to come back and do fun stuff with it. So I have taken the liberty of gluing the popsicle sticks on around the cardboard tube that we created here. So the light to shine on it. Um, so this is the cardboard. Now you'll notice that I left one side completely blank. And that is because I have also taken the liberty of uh, cutting out this little section here and we're just going to literally glue this to the side of the building uh, right here and the reason for that is because I'm going to glue another one to the front of the building here and we'll be able to run platforms between the two of them and uh, I will probably also do the same thing on the other side here and this gives a lot of rigidity and stability to the um, the, the platforms into the balconies. That way uh, you can build really cool stuff. Now the next step on this bad boy here, before we glue it in place, we're gonna go ahead and see where the, the connection pieces are here. And of course my light's not working right. Okay, so you can actually see where the connection pieces are right here. Uh, and they don't really look the best. So if you remember from the towers that I built from Necromunda, we used the cardboard uh, to make a strapping that would go around and look like a metal strap. We're gonna do the same thing here, but again, we want it to be old and rusty and kind of yucky. So we're just gonna take a, a strip of cardboard and literally, or car, uh, the toilet paper roll, and we're just gonna glue it around the outside like this. And if you want to, we can put little pop rivets on here to make it look like it was riveted in place. And we'll do that next. Now there's actually been a lot of stuff that's happened uh, in the last week or so since uh, I lost all the footage for the building that we were working on. Um, I actually have the part where I put the straps on and I did all that and for whatever reason it's all just disappeared. But luckily I haven't built the balcony on the outside yet nor have I built like the ladders or anything that I'm going to put onto it. So I'm going to go ahead and do that now on camera, finally. Um, so let's go ahead and get that started. So one of the things that I'm going to do here uh, on the bottom side 
so you're not going to see this next part here. This is going to be the bracers that sit like this and this. And so because of that, I'm going to use these tongue depressors or uh, giant popsicle sticks that uh, may have traumatized many of you as a youth. You know, ah, ah, anyway, yeah, this is the thing your doctor uses to choke you with. Anyway, <clears throat> what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this bad boy here and I'm going to break these guys off on either end, make it flat. And then I'm going to stick it up in here and I'm going to use these popsicle sticks to fill out the, the layers of the balcony. And again, this, this top balcony is really nice looking and it looks like it's been repaired very nicely and it's been kept up. I don't really want that to have me down here. Um, I'm also gonna build this one out as well, a little bit more, uh, cause I want it to come out some more. And uh, remember we were gonna have a bunch of these bracers. I'm still working on that. <laughs> um, and so then I'm also gonna use these pieces here as kind of like a buttress support right here and there. I said buttress, <laughs> Yeah, anyway. So, let's go ahead and get that started. Now these guys are small enough that you can just use a pair of scissors. Or I should say small enough. These guys are thin enough that you can just use a bunch of scissors to uh, cut them like paper. This will make a very clean cut though. So if you're looking to bust these things apart and make them look all raggedy, using a pair of scissors will give you a very nicely edged clean cut. Um, probably not something that you'd be looking for in most cases, but in this one, not so much. Not so bad. Okay, so where do we want this? We want that right there, right? So we're gonna put that there. We're gonna put it in there like that. Yay for me. So I'm gonna use my hot glue gun here. And then I'm gonna come along underneath here and put some more glue. Because I can. So there we go with that, and that's going to start the balcony. It's going to sure start it off pretty nicely. We're going to lock that. It's pretty cool. Alright, so the next thing we're going to do here, we're going to cut this bad boy like this. And lack of A's. I'm going to stick it underneath here. Um, I don't know how, I want, how wide I'm going to want to get it. Let's make this balcony come out to about, we're gonna cut this bad boy off right about there. Now that I have this length, I'm gonna go ahead and get a couple more popsicle sticks. I'm gonna cut them to that length also. And I'm gonna run three like this and then one more horizontal parallel, whatever. You get the idea. really see what I'm doing here. So I'm gonna have to do this upside down and backwards so you guys can see it. Or sideways, how about sideways? Sideways is a good compromise. All right, so the first thing I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna measure out where I wanna put this bad monster. I'm gonna put it right here, see, like that. And so I'm gonna put my finger right here. That means that all of this is gonna get hot glue. And I'm gonna go splorch. Then I'm going to do the same thing on these guys here and here. And that's very vertical. Very, very vertical. Flip it over, boom. That's what it looks like. Just like that. How cool is that? The beginnings of the deck. And you know, it would just be a nice deck with a little barbecue on it, hang out with your friends. It'd be nice. It'd be, it'd be cool. We'd like it. We'd have fun. It'd be, it'd be, we'd be, I'd be, we'd be, we'd be happy fun. Yeah. Okay, now. Get all the junk out of there. Come on. For realsies. Alright. Now, we take this guy here, as we were doing before. Get the top off. Bottom off. Like that. Just strong like that. Boom. Can you see how nice that is? Okay, so let's go ahead and go. Ah! And 
And so there we have the beginnings of the end. I mean, the beginnings of the, uh, the balcony. So it'll look kind of like this. See? Pretty cool. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take these popsicle sticks here, and I'm going to lay them kind of haphazardly across here. I'm going to break them up kind of like I did here. And I'm going to run them all across here. Here you have it. So now using the uh, popsicle sticks and all that, I was able to build this little balcony that goes down on the second level. So the little duders uh, will come along and they'll be down in here. Yay! And it'll go up the ladder and they'll be able to go through here and out onto the balcony and choo choo choo. Choo 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 choo. <laughs> okay. So now what we're going to do is we're going to work on uh, another balcony. I want to put it like over over here somewhere. Yeah, I'm going to put it over here. And it's going to be the exact same thing like this. Now you'll notice how I buttressed this. Uh, what I did was I took a popsicle stick and I, and I ran it down like this and then I glued it to another popsicle stick and I glued them together. Where's the camera? There we go. <laughs> Lights and camera. Always impressed. All right. So I glued them together underneath here and then I took a little wedge and I glued it here and one here and that gives it a lovely support. And the reason I did that this instead of just having like a little X or something or just building a wall all the way across is because when you're playing these games and you want your little duder to, to go into here and through this door here, you can't do that if there's a bunch of junk here so it becomes difficult to move them around. And when it's on the table, as you can see, my hand has a hard time getting my little guy underneath here, right? So what I need to do, see the dude is not quite so tall. There we go. So the little duder goes underneath there. So if I have it open here, I can stick my hand under there and I can, I can do stuff to get him around without knocking the turn around too much. Um, that means that I can, I can continue to use the access to this door here as I can get him through the door, pew, 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 and or all of that. So then this terrain piece doesn't become more of a piece of decoration rather than a, a usable terrain piece. Because it's easy to forget when you're building the balconies and things like this that this is a piece that we're going to be using in a game and ultimately the, uh, all this stuff has to be open for the models to get in, in, on, and around. Okay, there we go. Next up we're going to do here is we're going to build ourselves a ladder. Okay, I'm on the ladder right here. I'm going to put it right here and that's just where I want it. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to get two uh, popsicle sticks. Just like this, just like this. And then all I'm gonna do, and this is the easiest thing in the world to do, you're just gonna take this top piece here, and you're gonna bust it off like that. Bottom piece, bust it off like this. Look at that. Then what you're gonna do is you're gonna take another popsicle stick and you're gonna break it into sections. And you have to make sure that the sections are the same length. Uh, they don't have to be, like you don't have to measure it out or anything right off the bat, um, cause that's just, no one's going to be standing on the ladder. So you bust off a piece like this, right? That's that's going to be the section of your of your ladder. So you put that one there, and you go do 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 do. And you're going to need about six or seven of these. So, yeah, right on camera here. Ah, there we go. And so then, uh, you know, you can go through and trim them up afterwards so that they're all roughly the same length. And these guys here are not all the same length, uh, which can cause some issues. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to come in here with my exacto, because exacto meaning exactness, and uh, I'm going to make these guys roughly the same width, just by slicing off the end pieces here, like that. Now this can be a little bit tedious to do this, but you're going to end up saving yourself a metric boat ton of issues if you don't get these relatively close to the same size. Never cut towards yourself, children. And one of the things you have to be careful of while you're doing this, if you really get crazy on it, um, is that you can split the piece in half and you don't want to do that because you want it to be the same width. So what we're going to do now is we're going to come in here and just put a little schlop of glue right on there. And then just take this piece of wood and stick it right on there. 
just like that. See how easy that was? Simple, simple dimple. We'll continue doing this until I have enough rings on here and then I'll glue it all together and I'll slap this bad monster on the top and then we'll stick it on here. Another useless tidbit of information that I can give you, it's very important to note, um, is that uh, X-Acto blades, when you're cutting through cardboard, um, gets very, 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 very dull, like quickly, just like super quick. It'll dull it right out. Um, when it's cutting through wood, however, for whatever reason, uh, it does not. So if you have a really, really sharp X-Acto knife, or hobby knife, and you are cutting through your wooden dowels or whatever with it, and you're thinking to yourself, well, it's okay, I can run it across my finger because um, it's, uh, it's probably really dull now. Do not bet on it. That is a, that's a trip to the emergency room waiting to happen. Okay, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to take this, do the same thing I did before, I'm going to bust off the top. Because the little roundy bits cause issues. Stop the bottom. Like these. And then we'll we put it together like these. Like that. Ta-da! Okay, so what we're going to do then is we're just going to come here and go... And as you can see, building the ladder did not take me more than just a few moments. Again, this doesn't have to be perfect because it's going to be glued onto the model. But we want it to be, you know, close enough. Okay, boom, there we go. So there's the ladder, and that's what it looks like when it's done. So, yeah. And we're going to put the ladder in place. Boom, just like that. And I'm going to hot glue this bad monster down. So the first thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to get rid of this piece of cardboard. Once this cools down, I'll clean up the glue a little bit better. But, uh, yeah. So, there you go. There's the ladder, and that's what it looks like. Glued into place, ready to rock and roll. We're gonna paint that up and make it look really pretty! To help facilitate the balcony in the way I wanted it to go, I used these little wooden dowels that I bought again. The same place, the craft store, or the craft store, the dollar store. I got these for a dollar. Um, and I just used them as support bra brackets or braces whenever I want them. Uh, and so what I did was I literally just hot glued them up underneath here, and then I added a little support bracket here so that it would hold the extra weight as I extended this third floor out this way, and possibly other ways. So we'll see how that goes here in a minute. Again, I want this to look all rickety-rackety and pretty creakety weakety so uh, yeah, we'll go from there. And using the same techniques as the scaffolding that we made earlier, I went ahead and made the balcony uh, that goes around the outside. And uh, I just used a quick piece of uh, two popsicle stick here, and I uh, created the brace right there. And that is that. Also, the important thing that I did here was I left a hole right here so that models could be placed in on and around this middle middle area here. Otherwise, we would have just shut the whole thing out. So the ladder goes up to here, and uh, and in fact, if you want to, you can even trim that ladder off like by a rung, and that'll help make it so that this is more accessible. But again, like I said before, and many times before, really the only thing that the middle layer is gonna be used for is just decoration. No one's gonna stay on that layer. Um, they're gonna go head out to the balcony here, or they're gonna go around to this one here. Which reminds me, 
now it's time we have to put something up here uh, to get that over there. So that's how that's going to work. Alrighty, let me go ahead and build a little set of stairs right here and it'll come over to here and then uh, I'll build a ladder that goes from here uh, up to there. And with the magic of cameras, I was able to take our lovely little structure here and uh, create a stairwell there to a platform which then goes up to this lovely balcony and then I created the ladder that goes up to the top balcony. Okay, so with all the techniques that we've used so far, you can continue on building this and you can make it as big or as little as you want. Um, again, the decorating of this keeps going and going and going. It depends on what you want to do. You're, follow your imagination. I think this personally is about as big as I would make it. Um, your, your, your duders are going to spend some time moving around and they have places they can hide and they have ladders they can go up and places they can fall off and die horribly. So I mean all in all it works out really really well. It's one piece that does uh, most of what you want it to and this uh, is a great setup. You can build a bunch of these around the table and then you can use some scaffolding to go from building to building to building and you create kind of like a skyway which is really really cool. And uh, so yeah, you're going to see this next uh, on uh, on my tabletop as I'm playing some uh, Warcry. Hey, you're about to see a really cool flyby of uh, this whole thing, uh, <laughs> one of all the buildings and stuff that I put together. Unfortunately, however, uh, one of the buildings that was there is actually where I used a piece of, well, there's like this separator piece inside of the Warcry box set. And so I used that piece as the back, or the median wall, I guess it be the median wall, in uh, in that piece and you'll also see that it's got like a giant altar dripping blood and there's a cauldron of blood and all that other stuff um, that's that's not in these videos yet <laughs> that's my next video set set up you're gonna see how I build the cauldron of blood and the altar and all that stuff so yeah thanks for watching and uh, see you next time on homebrew terrain This is the aftermath of a big project. <laughs> oh yeah, I get serious. Yeah, now I gotta get to cleaning. <laughs>